I recently got a question in the comment section on our YouTube channel and the question reads, do you have any more detail about the plumbing into the tanks showing how you spill the water across multiple tanks? And so I thought I would do a short video to explain the different ways that you can do this. So in the screen that you're looking at right now, I've got four different scenarios for you. So A, B, C, and D. So in scenario A, this is what we would refer to as a hydraulic conveyance system. And so water is collected off the roof. It goes through the gutter down into a rain head. And this is basically just a screened inlet that prevents bugs and debris from coming into the water. It then goes straight down underground through a pipe. And as long as the inlet in the tank is lower than the inlet on the rain head, then the water will push its way through here without a pump, which is kind of cool. And the reason that you might want to use hydraulic conveyance is because maybe you've got a driveway in between and you want to get the water from the house to the rain tank, but you don't want to have an overhead pipeline connecting the rain head to the rain tank and then limiting what kind of a vehicle can go through this little space here. So there's some pros and cons to hydraulic conveyance. Number one is um, like you can pretty much move the water as far away as you want, as long as the inlet of the tank is lower than the inlet of the rain head. So that's kind of cool. Um, but one of the disadvantages is that if you live in a cold climate, this pipe has to be drained down in the wintertime because it's going to freeze. The other thing that can occur in these systems is that the water will stagnate in here meaning that it doesn't move very much. And so any debris, dust, dirt will accumulate across the bottom of this pipe. And so you have to have the ability to clean it out. And so I probably should have drawn a clean out in here that facilitates the removal of that debris. So that's a hydraulic conveyance system. And so the other question that I think that you are getting at is how do you actually connect from one tank to another? And so it's referred to as a bulkhead fitting, and I'm just gonna bring one up here. So a bulkhead fitting is kind of a unique fitting. And basically what it is, is two pieces, it's a two part piece. Actually there's three pieces to it. So there's a gasket, which is where my mouse is right now. And you drill a hole in the tank, and then this whole fitting goes through, and then there's a, a nut on the back end right here, which screws it together. And so it allows you to put a hole into the tank and you'll notice that it's threaded on the inside here as well. And then it allows you to actually connect multiple tanks together. So the bulkhead fitting is the fitting that you're probably looking for. And as you can see, they're, they're quite expensive. So the second option I would refer to as a cascade system. And so the first tank would have to fill up first and then it would cascade over into the second tank. And the theoretical advantage of this would be that the water in B would have more time to settle and then it would cascade over into the second tank. And so maybe it might be a little bit cleaner. However, knowing what we know about biofilms and how tanks are actually bioreactors because the biofilms actually clean the water, they will accumulate nutrients and heavy metals and all the other stuff that you don't want in your water. It's, it's a pretty amazing phenomena. Um, I don't think that this is a very practical solution. So the next system would be system C, this system would be a kind of a unified system. And so the tank one would fill up at the same time as tank two. And so basically you've connected it with a bulkhead fitting on each side and the tanks will fill and drain simultaneously. This is probably the most practical solution and the one that you're most likely to use. So you'd have a bulkhead fitting here, a bulkhead fitting here, a bulkhead fitting here and a bulkhead fitting here. Lastly, this is a slightly different form of cascade system. And so again, water would come down, fill this tank up, but instead of dumping in the top of the tank, you could dump it into the bottom of the tank to reduce any turnover of sludge that might be on the bottom of the tank. Again, I don't really think that this is a practical solution. I don't think there's really any scientific basis to do this. I just drew it so that I could speak about it because I've, I've seen people do this type of system before. Theoretically, maybe, you know, you'd get some settling in this tank and this water would be cleaner, but that's a lot of water to keep in a tank that you can't get access to. And so again, you'd have to have some sort of a valve 
Perhaps you could have a pipe connecting into this pipe right here with a valve so that if you ever wanted to co-mingle the two tanks, you could open a valve and do so. But I don't really see a lot of practical use in doing this. So hopefully that answered your question. Uh, if you have any other questions or comments about how to connect rain tanks or about any kind of rainwater system, uh, leave a message in the comments below. And you may want to check out our rainwater harvesting course. Uh, and or um, essential rainwater harvesting handbook on how to harvest rainwater no matter where you are on planet earth in a safe and effective and cost effective way if you found this content useful hit subscribe and if you like getting content like this head over to our website and sign up to our newsletter we put out tons of content on how to go off grid how to grow your own food how to capture your own water, how to turn waste into resource, how to get your shelter set up, and generally how to become more resilient in the face of all the craziness going on in the world right now. Thanks so much. Talk soon.